This is a solution to land, water, food, energy, and climate, all of it. It's affordable, it's doable, it's near term, 10 to 15 years. It's financially solid with oil at $50 a barrel. Oil is now at $100 a barrel, so it's a no-brainer. So fair warning, a big idea ahead. Uh, the ecosystem appears to be crashing. Uh, we have huge fresh water shortages. Uh, species extinctions, the emergence of fragile human-engendered monoculture biomes, CO2-induced climate change, pollution of all manner, deforestation, uh, losses of uh, topsoil wildlife habitat. Overall, the humans are practicing anti-terraforming, where terraforming is making the ecosystem more salubrious to humans. Uh, we're currently, the way we're living and the number of people on the planet, we're short 50% of the planet now, which is why the ecosystem is crashing. Uh, as the Asians and their billions come up to Western living standards, which are doing at 9 to 11 percent per year growth rate, we will be short three planets. They're not generally available. Uh, so what's going to happen is that we can't sustain this uh, standard of, of uh, living, and uh, the standard of living worldwide is going to have to crash. Uh, so this is a solution to that uh, going forward. Uh, there are two types of plants, freshwater plants, uh, also known as glycophytes, and this is the way we currently produce food and, and fodder and also biomass uh, with uh, freshwater plants. It turns out there's another alternative universe to plants, which are saltwater plants. These are called halophytes. Hallow means salt. Uh, these are utilized and have been for hundreds of years on the shorelines of the Indian subcontinent uh, in a saline agriculture for food and fodder and also some other countries. Uh, freshwater scarcity is now the single greatest threat to human health, the environment, and the global food supply. These are not things on the margin. These are really serious. Uh, there's an emerging desert mantra. Uh, almost half of the world uh, land worldwide is, in fact, wastelands. It's either deserts or uh, land where there's very little fresh water. Uh, a lot of it has sunlight, uh, a lot of it has brackish saline groundwater, such as the Nubian aquifer under the eastern Sahara, and many of these are at and near seacoasts. These can be used for saline seawater agriculture for biomass energy, biomass where you first extract the fuel for tra heavy transportation fuels and you burn the rest of it to replace coal, and food uh, using uh, uh, halophyte plant stocks. Uh, biomass, of course, takes up the CO2 during growth. Some of the CO2 is sequestered in the roots. Uh, when you utilize the biomass, distill it, burn it for energy, the CO2 returns to the atmosphere, so it's better than a closed CO2 cycle each time through the cycle because of what goes into the roots. You take some out. Uh, the problem with biomass is an obvious climate energy solution has been the shortage of fresh water and arable land. This is why ethanol isn't used, because it's driving the cost of food up, because we don't have enough uh, arable land and, and the fresh water to pull it off. Uh, so what we're suggesting here, the big idea, is saline seawater agriculture on the other half of the planet, okay? The half of the planet where nobody's now living hardly, which is the deserts and the wastelands, uh, as an alternative to conventional agriculture for everything. The advantages of this seawater agriculture is 97% of all the water is seawater. We're not going to run out of it. The, the, this is not... Uh, T taking the salt out of the water, we use the seawater as is. Uh, the seawater contains a wide variety of important minerals. Uh, these are minerals that we need in our diet that currently, uh, because we've worn out the land, are not in our diet anymore. Plus, seawater contains 80% of the nutrients required for agriculture. Do you need to add some nitrogen, but soybeans and alfalfa take up nitrogen from the atmosphere, and we could, with genomics on these halophyte plants, take the nitrogen up from the atmosphere. So halophytes, there's actually 10,000 natural halophytes. Uh, I live on the shores of the York River across the Yorktown battlefield in southeastern Virginia, and in the driest Virginia summer, uh, the plants that have their roots down in the brackish York River salt water are, are doing great, okay? So I've got a bunch of halophytes re, re, uh, uh, living in my backyard. Uh, we have 100 halophyte plants now in the trials for various commercial applications. 
Uh, there's 22 countries worldwide who are at least doing experimental farms for food and fodder, not yet for energy. The energy part is, is the, the, the idea that I'm, I'm trying to, to describe here. Uh, the Chinese have advertised that they have genetically modified wheat, rice, corn, uh, tomatoes, and rapeseed and uh, produce these on their beaches and salt marshes using seawater as a way to feed their billions. Uh, sample wastelands suitable for halophyte biomass production, Western Australia, around the Arabian Sea, Persian Gulf, the Middle East, the Sahara, the Southwest US, including West Texas. I'm working with the Texas A&M people on what to do with West Texas as the oil wells dry up. And it turns out West Texas is underlain by the world's largest aquifer, the Agualla Aquifer, which is mostly saline. Uh, and then there's the Atacamba in uh, South America. So we can use seawater irrigation near dry and flattish coastal areas uh, with, where there are large saline aquifers. We can pump from them. Or inland, where the economics is feasible, we've looked at uh, the cost to pump the seawater and so forth, and uh, to do this. And uh, with oil at $50 a barrel, you can break even. With oil at $100 a barrel, this is a really neat way to make an awful lot of money. Uh, the, the characteristics of this uh, desert wasteland halophyte ag, uh, we have run uh, test plots in, in Arizona and other places for 14, 18 years with no observable salt buildup because the soil is sandy. Uh, it does, as you use the seawater for agriculture, produce a cooler, moist surface, which induces freshwater rain. Okay, the seawater evaporates, goes up, produces clouds, produces freshwater rain. If you did this on the Sahara, you would put rainfall back in the Middle East and stop the desertification of the Sub-Sahara. So this approach uses what we have a plethora of now, which is wastelands, half the planet, and seawater, which is 97% of the water, directly, not desalinization, to solve serious societal problems now and also do it affordably. So just a goodly portion of the Sahara is capable of providing, if we plowed up the Sahara, irrigated with the Mediterranean, using halophytes, planted halophytes, could provide sufficient biomass to replace all of the fossil carbon energy, all of the petroleum, all the coal, and all the natural gas, and provide all the petrochemical feedstock we need for all the plastics, and grow enough food for anybody who wants to eat. And you would do this instead of conventional agriculture so that you would get back some of the 68% of the fresh water we're running out of that's now used for conventional agriculture. So as advertised, this solves affordably, near-term, uh, and doable land, water, food, energy, and warming. Now, the current status of this is I'm working with uh, Nina Fedorov, who is Hillary Clinton's science advisor. Uh, we've been able to start some stuff in Egypt. Uh, another person I'm working with has some farms doing this in northern Mexico. And uh, the United Arab Emirates is, is, is uh, starting a really major uh, halophyte operation. And I'm working with somebody who is uh, pumping seawater uh, from the Sea of Cortez over the hills into the Salton Sea in California to grow this stuff on Indian reservation wastelands near the Salton Sea. Uh, now, I've, I've got a reservation on this, and my reservation is I'm not sure that the human species is up to this. Uh, uh, we evolved over the past million years as superb hunter killer groups, and, and part of what evolved is something called the amygdala, part of our brain, which as near as we can tell is there to make us conservative, uh, because in the hunter-gatherer age, if you weren't conservative, you tended to get eaten, and this was rather unpleasant. So what, uh, uh, what we need is an amygdala shunt, all right, in order to pull this off. Uh, and uh, I mean, people, you know, as I've talked about this now for 14 years, uh, what I get is people have this uh, uh, absolute investment, sunk cost, amateurized has to, in the coal, the oil, the natural gas, okay? And so people want to solve problems, but they don't really want to change anything. 
okay? And, and this is really requires a massive change for the real mess that this species has gotten ourselves into in terms of this ecosystem. Uh, now, uh, I should indicate uh, that we, NASA, are also involved now in another big idea for energy, which is called low energy nuclear reactions. Uh, this is nuclear without the radiation. This is nuclear with beta decay. This is nuclear with weak interaction, the other part of, of the standard theory of, of the quantum mechanics. Uh, this is really inexpensive. This is uh, 2,000 to 10 to the fifth times chemical in terms of, 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 of the energy capacity. Uh, and there's some really recent experiments in Italy in January and February by Rossi and other people that, that have just broken free on this thing. And, and I really think this is going to happen fast. And, and if it does, this is an alternative solution space for the energy and climate part of this. But we're still going to need the halophytes for the land, water, and food part. Thank you very much. <laughs>